live from the NBC Tower, this is the Channel 5 News at 5. It's less than 30 years old, and it's already a museum relic. Today, a 727 jet made its final landing en route to retirement at the Museum of Science and Industry. But it was a landing that had never been tried before. Channel 5 aviation reporter Jim Tillman tells us how it was done. First, you find the right pilot. One like Captain B.C. Thomas, test pilot, United Airlines. You pick a beautiful fall day. You invite the public, the press, and just to be safe, crash rescue teams. It's the final flight for this proud bird, so why not take a look-see, a low pass. And finally, it's time to lower the flaps and the landing gear for the last time. It's a super short runway, about half as long as O'Hare's shortest jet runways. So, Captain Thomas, what did you do to practice for this? <laughs> I didn't practice for it. You didn't actually go out and fly this particular airplane for... Well, I, I am the current in the 727, but as yeah. far as making short field landings, no, we don't, we don't practice that. The winds at Meg's can be very tricky. Today, they were only about 12 miles an hour, but gusty. And Captain Thomas makes minor adjustments for the wind. He slows the airplane down to a crawl, about 115 miles an hour. He later says he was aiming to land about 50 feet from the approach edge of the runway. For thousands and thousands of people who will visit the Museum of Science and Industry in the days to come, they will see this as just another relic of a time gone by. But those of us who have flown airplanes just like this one, it will be a dream come true. Jim Tillman, Channel 5 News. Plane's journey isn't done yet. On Thursday, they load it on a barge and then ship it down to Burns Harbor in Indiana for final preparation before it goes on display at the Museum of Science and Industry in the fall of 1994. This is Eyewitness News with John Drury and Diane Burns, Steve Deschler with Weather, Jim Rose on Sports, and the Eyewitness News team. All right, Floyd, thank you. Well, Miggs Field, as you probably know, is Chicago's little airport on the lakefront. But today, according to our Frank Matthey, Miggs' one short runway received a very big test. The curious were lined up at Miggs Field waiting. The fire trucks were put on alert just in case of emergency. And then the United commercial jet came in for a flyby along Big Runway. It's unusual because planes this size are not supposed to land here. Yes, that was a 727, the plan to land at Meeks Field, a big plane at a small airport. But this is a special plane with a special destination, destination history. The 28-year-old airliner is being donated by United Airlines to the Museum of Science and Industry. It's a model that changed the entire airline business. It was the first truly successful commercial jet airplane. And for quite a few years. Many years, almost 30 years. And that's why the plane is going to the Museum of Science and Industry, and that's why it has to land here. The long plane on a short runway, on a windy day. But pilot B.C. Thomas does it, and with plenty of runway to spare. The uh, wind off of the buildings and the, the water land contrast, I think, caused a lot of, uh, lot of turbulence. But it, 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 it wasn't that bad. Would you like to take this thing off from here? It would be possible, but uh, you'd have to uh, probably chain it down at the end of the runway and go to full power and then cut the chain. <laughs> this coming Thursday, the 727 will be loaded onto a barge and taken to Benton Harbor, Michigan for modification. Then next fall, it will be barged back to Chicago and hauled across Lakeshore Drive to the Museum of Science and Industry for what should be an interesting landing inside. Inside the museum, it will be along the first balcony, which, as you remember, is at the long axis on the first balcony. So this 727 has flown for the last time. But in two years, it will take off again as a new exhibit. Frank Matthew, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. <laughs> Might be easier to move move the museum, probably. Yeah, I would think so. I wouldn't want to be on that plane as it took off for big field, I don't think. This is Chicago's Midday News. You were driving on Lakeshore Drive at around 10 o'clock this morning. You weren't hallucinating. That was a United Airlines 727 landing at Miggs Field, normally the domain of private aircraft. 
It isn't really a United Jet anymore. It's about to become a museum relic. Joni Lowe explains. The Boeing 727-100 made a flyby about 100 feet off the lakeshore. Very close, like a military maneuver, nothing like we're used to seeing from a large commercial plane. Then it veered sharply toward the lake to prepare for approach. When the pilot steered the jet toward the tiny runway of Miggs Field, it wobbled as he fought a stiff crosswind. And yet, he landed it safely with plenty of room to spare. When you're talking about a short field approach, so the idea is to put it on the end of the runway, and uh, you don't want to you don't want to hurt anything, but you want to put it on rather firm and, and get on the brakes and reverse and the uh, speed brakes immediately. It was an unusual assignment for the pilot. And of course, we work for United Airlines. United Airlines is not in the business of letting us have fun. We fly airplanes for a serious uh, job, uh, so it's very rare that we get to make a flyby. In fact, this is the first one I've ever made, and, and, and a 727. The daring landing ushers in a new era for the Museum of Science and Industry's transportation exhibit. Uh, lots of people fly, but many people have never seen a plane this close, have never been in a plane, and really don't understand why it stays up in the air. Just think about it. I mean, it's a pretty heavy object. How come it stays in the air? Well, we hope to be able to explain that. This plane goes on a barge headed for Indiana for storage and then next year makes another daring voyage across Lakeshore Drive to the museum where they'll have to break down walls to get the thing inside. At Miggs Field, Joni Lum, WGN News. <laughs> well, they couldn't have asked for a nicer day. United got its money's worth out of that plane. It flew from 1964 until last November, carrying more than 3 million passengers, almost 28 million miles. And I wonder what the visibility was out there today, because it certainly looked clear. Oh, this is that beautiful Canadian Air, 20-plus miles. Uh, wow. And yet another first for our Science and Industry Museum around sure. here, Bob. That's terrific. Where uh, are they going to put that thing? They're going to hang it inside? I They've got some know. other planes hanging all around in the ceiling. Kind of interesting to see. They've got the submarine, the mine down there, now a, now a plane. That's pretty good. you got a weather office down there. One <laughs> Maybe one of these days they will, Bob. I'll tell you so. They will. And if you're on Lakeshore Drive today, you might have thought it was Mannheim Road. Chicago's Museum of Science and Industry has a captured Nazi submarine, a coal mine, an Egyptian tomb. Now it will have a 727 jetliner. United Airlines donating this retiring Boeing 727, seen flying into tiny MiGs Field today. It was a tricky landing, as you might expect. Textbook, however, considering there's less than 4,000 feet of runway right here at MiGs. That plane will be on exhibit at the museum next fall. This is Channel 2 News at 6. An historic landing at Miggs Field marks the end and the beginning for a 28-year-old jetliner. The Boeing 727, finding strong crosswinds, became the largest commercial jet ever to land at Miggs. After 28 million miles in the air, this was its last landing. Now the big jet will be loaded aboard a barge and warehoused in Indiana for a year. Then it goes to its last hangar, an enormous exhibit hall at the Museum of Science and Industry. That'll be a nice addition, won't it? Steve mm -hmm. Baskerville looking ahead to Frost? I tell you, one for the record there, one for the record in this direction. That you could...